Merry Christmas to you. I concluded last night's worship service, concluded it with Merry Christmas, so I began this worship service with Merry Christmas. It's certainly good to see each of you here and to have all those online as well as we worship together on this wonderful day in the life of lots of churches, all churches uh, around the globe. I extend to you the peace of Christ, so the peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet each other in the name of Christ. Good morning and Merry Christmas. The prelude today is a setting of the beautiful carol, Lo, How a Rose Air Bloom.
Will all who are able join me in the call to worship? Please stand. Have we not heard? Something new has happened. Children of God, these are not rumors, for unto us is born this day, Jesus. Let us go and see, bring gifts of praise. I invite you now to join me in the invocation. Amazing God, ruler of all that is, and shepherd of stars, whose glory is revealed in vastness and power, yet whose name is love. This is a time when we remember your gentleness revealed in the birth of Jesus. This is the time when we believe again if only for a season, that love is stronger than fear, peace more enduring than anonymity, and that the shadows will never put out the light. And so this day, we offer you our joys, hopes, dreams, and gratitudes as we gather in the name of love. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of God appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by God through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of God commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. from a poem by Donald Hall titled Christmas Party at the South Danbury Church. December 21st, we gather at the white church festooned red and green, the tree flashing green red lights beside the altar. After the children of Sunday school recite scripture, sing songs and scrape out solos, they retire to dress for the finale, to perform the pageant again. Mary and Joseph kneeling cradle side, three kings, shepherds and shepherdesses. Their garments are bathrobes with moth holes cut down from the church's ancestors. Standing short and long, they stare in all directions for mothers, sisters and brothers, giggling and waving in recognition and at the South Denbury Church, a moment before Santa arrives with her ho-hos and bags of popcorn, in the half dark of whole silence, God enters the world as a newborn again. Our second scripture reading are, is from uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Hear these familiar words. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of God stood before them and the glory of God shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a, ch a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven 
and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Our next reading this morning is called Mary Considers Her Situation, authored by Lucy Shaw. What next, she wonders, with the angel disappearing and her room suddenly gone dark. The loneliness of her news possesses her. She ponders how to tell her mother. Still, the secret at her heart burns like a sun rising. How to hold it in? that which cannot be contained. She nestles into herself, half convinced it was some kind of good dream. She, it's visionary. But then, part dazzled, part prescient, she hugs her body, a pod with a seed that will split her. Please hear our third gospel reading for our Christmas morning worship. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which God has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. So ends the reading of our third gospel for our Christmas morning worship. Thank you. 
Words from Wendell Berry titled, Remembering That It Happened Once. Remembering that it happened once, we cannot turn away the thought. As we go out cold to our barns toward the long night's end, that we ourselves are living in the world it happened in when it first happened. That we ourselves opening a stall a latch thrown open countless times before, might find them breathing there, foreknown the child bedded in straw, the mother kneeling over him, the husband standing in belief. He scarcely can believe in light that lights them from no source we see, an April morning's light, the air around them joyful as a choir, we stand with one hand on the door, looking into another world that is this world, the pale daylight coming just as before, our chores to do, the cattle all awake, our own white frozen breath hanging in front of us. And we are here as we have never been before, sighted as not before, our place holy, although we knew it not.
words by Joyce Rupp titled Incarnate One. Over these 2000 and more years, have we become immune to your embodiment? Has the reality of your fleshy humanness become a mere glazed remembrance of joy? Perhaps this Christmas, the surprise will reawaken. We will be open mouthed in awe at your coming. Our wonder will surpass what consumes our lives. We will look with fresh awareness at who you are, learning from you, rededicated to live your teachings until our fleshiness too radiates genuine love. We'll continue this morning with offering our prayers for our community and the wider world. A quick note is that yesterday, I think that Fred reminded us that the Benoits have scheduled a memorial for Geneva's granddaughter, Chloe Morel. Um, you will learn more about that in our order of worships going forward. Are there other people, places, or situations you all want to lift up in prayer this morning? Vivian. Prayers for Vivian's neighbor, Elizabeth, who is without water and heat right now. There are other things you wish to raise aloud this morning. Helen. Helen's brother in rehab coming along. Prayers for continued coming along. Any folks online? Good morning. Our, our online friends are quiet today. Last night, they were full of uh, joys and concerns, but I still needed to come over and say, because I'm not sure that Thomas is going to do this. Uh, welcome to Dream of Hours, our liturgist today, Thomas's mother, who braved the cold, left Boston to come to the warm weather of, uh, of Atlanta. And we're glad that she is here as well as Thomas's sister and brother, um, and they're here with us on Christmas Day. Um, let's see. We do have from Joyce Myers Brown echoing what perhaps has already been said and was said last night, prayers for all of those who are out in the cold weather today, braving that cold weather outside. I invite you all just to take a few moments of private silence and I will offer a pastoral prayer. Gracious and loving God, God of love and life, the blue sky and the barren trees, we thank you for the joy of this day, of this time to gather together in this place with one another to sing songs of joy and peace and praise to you. We pray for those in our midst who are without water, without heat, who are grieving the loss of family or friends in this season. We pray for the two buses of immigrants who were dropped off in front of the vice president's house late last night. And we pray too for every single person who was a part of that decision. We ask forgiveness, God, because indeed, more often than not, we know exactly what we are doing, and yet we do it anyways. We pray for our leaders that they might have the courage, and the grace to not look towards the next election, to not look towards the next donation, but instead to look at the here and now for what might be made possible in this world, for what might be made new for each and every one of us. We pray too that all of us might have that same courage, that same grace to risk something big for the sake of something good. Loving God, we lift all these prayers that have been said aloud and remain on our hearts up to you. And indeed, we are bold to pray one more thing together. The words of our common prayer found and printed in your order of worship. Our mother, father, who is in the heavens, May your name be made holy. May your dominion come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the bread we need 
and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not put us to the test, but rescue us from evil. For yours is the dominion and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is Luke who wrote Acts, and in the book of Acts has the Apostle Paul. Well, he quotes the Apostle Paul as saying, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I think we've all experienced that in our lives, and we have also experienced great joy through giving. So during this season of joy, let us experience that joy as we return to God out of the abundance which most of us have. Pray with me. God of new life, out of the abundance of our lives, we offer these gifts to you. Through your blessing, may these offerings become a source of hope and love in Central Church and in the world beyond us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing that I did forget to mention, uh, the joys and concerns. Um, after our closing hymn, there is a benediction, there is no postlude today, but you are invited to gather in the commons for a piece of gingerbread and some cider.
baby cries and its cry commands our attention. What does it need? How can we provide? Dear one, it's you. We hear your cry. Feed the hungry, hold the hurting, shelter the shivering, stay close to the suffering. To your Christmas cry, we answer, yes, amen. <laughs>